My name is William Dalrymple and I'm a writer about Delhi. I always like this area in Meroli uh, because it's, it's so extraordinary. This little island of, of ancient monuments stranded between the modern metro line, which represents the very newest Delhi, uh, and the walls of Lalkot, which was the, uh, the very early Delhi of the, of the Rajput kings. And then in the middle of all this, you've got this lovely Sufi centre, uh, Jamali Kamali. Um, which is the kind of Delhi's own uh, Rumi and Shams al Tabriz story. It's a story of a, a Sufi and his follower, Jamali and Kamali, uh, two guys, who were so inspired by each other that they reached heights of Sufi Islamic poetic bliss. And there are apparently great divans full of the, the poetry of both men. So in about 1820, um, the British resident at the court of Maharishal Zafar, Thomas Metcalfe, takes this tomb where well, there's a guy buried and it's quite a famous major, major mogul monument and he turns it into his summer house and he builds an entire uh, Georgian building which has now actually fallen down or been knocked down around the tomb. So you've got a kind of mogul core uh, with an East India Company middle. Metcalfe built a, a kind of separate house for his son Theo. And again, like so many buildings in Delhi, you have these different layers. On the outside, it's all looking as if it's very mogul with these pointed arches, and you can see some sort of lovely mogul murkana work inside. But inside, the Metcalfs did it up as a colonial house, and you've got lovely colonial, perfect Georgian fireplace sitting here. There's some bullet holes from 1857. But on top, you get the most fabulous view out over the Kutub Minar. There's a wonderful view from here, back over Dilkusha, out over the Jabali Kamali, and Adam Khan's tomb against the sun. One of the things I love about Metcalf is the um, it's the sheer conceit of the man. His political career was all about uh, ending the Mughal Empire. He was there to um, basically usher in the Brits and to get Zafar out of the Red Fort. This is based on the Shalimar Garden, uh, the way the, the water used to run down in Mughal runnels in the Shalimar Gardens. Uh, he lives in a Mughal tomb. Uh, I don't know what the modern equivalent would be, kind of Modi choosing to live in a mosque or something. I don't know what the, what the modern Indian equivalent would be. Suddenly, out of the jungle, you walk in, and first of all, all you see is the top rank of arches. And then it goes down and down and down, and you find yourself in the middle of the most extraordinary four-tier bauli that looks like something out of desert Gujarat or Rajasthan. But what's happened here, interestingly, is that they've sort of Islamicized it. This is actually madrasa, and it's built for water, but it's also built for cool in the Delhi summer. Uh, and all the rooms of the students are off the central pool with the breezes blowing up from it. Uh, and uh, underground, of course, anyway, it would be cool in the hot weather. So you've got some very clever architectural design for the vicinity. In any other country of the world, you'd find people outside charging tickets. Here, there's nothing. Just walk in, it's empty. So on the edge of the archaeological park, you've got the shrine, which is what drew everyone here. All these things are here because of the shrine. The shrine was here first. It the, used to be the largest Sufi shrine in Delhi, the shrine of Qutb Sahib. As late as 1850s, it was still the most popular shrine in Delhi, much bigger and more famous than the Zamudin even. This is the middle of prayers, so people are in the mosque now rather than the shrine. But through this jali screen, you can see the shrine of Qutb Sahib. But the building immediately behind me is the Great Gateway built by Zafar, Bahadur Shah Zafar, the last Mughal emperor, uh, in about 1850. And it is the last piece of Mughal architecture, just before the mutiny, just before this whole world is wiped out. And what's interesting is that Zafar has stripped out all the European elements. There's no classical touches, there's no European anything. It's 200 years since the Mughals ruled the whole of India. They've been on the decline for 150 years. But uh, this is a statement saying we're still there. This is the elegance of what we're about. Well, we're only about five minutes away from Zafar Mahal here in Olives. 
uh, and we've passed through to get here. Uh, incredibly crowded, busty streets uh, leading from Zafir Mahal through the bazaar, uh, past the Marodi bus park. Uh, and in, out of this chaos, suddenly in all of Delhi is that mixture uh, of all these different worlds, the old uh, Urdu, Mughal elegance, chaotic modern Delhi, and now this new, new Delhi of sort of high fashion and glamour and fancy restaurants, all of which have their own part to play. Uh, but it's in the mix of the three uh, that I think the uh, real attraction of the city lies.